Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sober Bartender Podcast, the show where we recover from life. I'm your host, Brandy Kelly, and today I do have a guest for you. I've got Lois Hollis. Hello, Lois. Hi there. So happy to be here. So happy to have you. Lois is a shame guilt educator, a counselor, a filmmaker, and an author. Lois, we are so excited to have you here. Thank you, and I'm very, very excited and honored to be here to talk with all of you about something that's close to all of us and it's universal and it's in every country so we're going to dive right in and that and that's shame you you actually yeah. keep put the words together it's not shame, shame and guilt. guilt it's shame guilt it's like a coin heads and tails but it's still the nickel or it's okay. still the quarter it's a Shame guilty. And that's why we have been given the wrong information. And that's why we've gone down the hole of shame guilt. Yeah. And I feel like it's something that all of us experience oh, course, some to, to different degrees. And in different ways. Yeah. You know, we're all so different. Yeah, Thank heaven. But, but yes, <laughs> but it's also something that despite our differences, we definitely have all experienced. And those of us in recovery, I mean, just. It is tough. It it's, is tough, tough, tough. There's and so once many you, things that, that you think are just, you can never come back from because of the okay. shame guilt. And that's and, shame um, guilt's job. That's So that was my question. And I had like, when, as soon as, as soon as, um you know, I knew that I was going to get to talk to you, I wanted to ask, does, does shame and guilt serve a purpose? Is there some benefit that we can gain from it? The truth yeah. is shame guilt is an outside energy. We have love energy on one side. And what does love energy give us? Oh, dogs and joy and love and compassion, fortitude. We feel inspired. We have confidence. I mean, we don't have to go to school for this. We just are confident we just are loving we compassionate we help others we help ourselves and um we're willing to do it we don't aren't compelled but love does that to us love is the spirit i mean people that are just falling in love they're just they're the happiest people around you know so yeah. love energy love energy does that for us okay gives us many many feelings that end that end Shame guilt energy gives us the negative feelings. It's is that it, simple. Is it derived from fear? Fear is a double dose of shame guilt. Okay. Because I do feel like the opposite of love is not hate. It's actually fear. Fear. Yeah. But also all negativity comes from the shame guilt energy. Mm. When shame guilt comes into us, by words that we say to ourselves, you stupid jerk, why did you do that? Or your mother, your father says something, your girlfriend, your enemy. It doesn't matter. The Pope, the president, they all talk shame guilt words because that's how they were trained. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to us, it turns our positive emotions to negative ones. Compassion turns to depression. Intuition turns to anxiety. Mm. so that's that's yeah. a great point and and i did um i do want to tell our listeners and our viewers um i'm picturing these things as you're describing them but people don't have to just picture them because you've actually created videos to put of this yes visuals to this because you have to know shame guilt is an entity it exists it, it exists Mm -hmm. It exists. It's same as love exists. It's just its counterpart. And when I began speaking, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that, people are going, what are you saying? We don't understand a word. So I went, oh, you don't see what I see. I had many near-death experiences. So I can see things um, a little easier in other dimensions. So that's why I went to film school at 64, because... I had to show what I was seeing and I have 
four films on my website free that show you what it looks like, how it acts, and how it is. When you see it, you believe it. So please, please take the time, it's free, to look at my films and they're 15 minutes, you know, what's all her, you know, our, uh, our attention span has kind of contracted a little. So I honor that. So, um, you yeah, anyway, go back to. But yeah, I will, I will include the links for, um, for your website in the, in the show notes. And I do just want to applaud and commend you on learning how to do film. something new, a new film. And it, I mean, it, technology is really challenging for me so i just i applaud you i do too <laughs> uh, but i i can get on zoom so i'm happy yeah <laughs> anyway so yes that's why the filmmaking was the most important thing i did do and it's available okay so where was i okay so shame guilt is like a computer virus what happens to your computer when you get a virus you're typing along and all of a sudden a virus hits it and what happens it takes over everything. You're right. no longer I mean, in control of it. Right. The uh, Microsoft Word doesn't work or the computer um, car drive doesn't work. But e even though we have the same virus in our computer, your computer still acts different than mine. Mm. And that's important to know is that every computer is different. Every person is. And that's where the problem has come into shame you could be saying oh no it's anger no it's hatred oh it's not feeling good it's all of them mm -hmm. okay it's all of them you're right <laughs> it's all of them yeah and why is shame yield so strong and why is it so deadly and I use the word deadly, not dangerous. The reason is, have you ever heard of Dr. David Hawkins? Sounds familiar. He, yeah, he's he was a wonderful guy. He lives in heaven right now. And um, what he did was among many things. But one thing he did do was he gave a number, a numerical number, good old math, to each emotion. So the highest emotion that we can have is enlightenment. And I think we've all heard about the Buddha, Kuda people, excuse me, but, you know, and enlightenment and um, how you're one with it, the universe and singularity and all that, which is very true. And Jesus did that. And he is, it is possible. And the number that that comes in is 700,000 to the 30th power. Seven zero zero, zero zero zero, and thirty zeros. I don't know the name of the number. I forget it. But that's how big it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we go down to um, compassion and love, and um, uh, you know, a, a ability to do things. And then at two hundred, two hundred, it changes negative. Anxiety, hatred, revenge. And guess what the last emotion is? Is it guilt, guilt, shame? Shame, guilt. Yeah, I think guilt's first and shame's after that. They come in at 10. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's the lowest energy that a human can have and still be alive. I can picture that. I can picture and what that felt like. Yeah. So what is after the 10? Nothing. Nothing. Suicide. Yeah. And that's really important to um, address. I think that I might have sent it to you. If I didn't, please let me know and I can resend it because it's important for you to visually see how the numerical progression or degression happens and shame guilt is the lowest energy. So these people, whoever they are, that keep telling you that guilt is important because it makes you moral are really not 
telling you the truth. Yeah. Guilt, shame, guilt. Shame is in the unconscious mind and guilt's in the conscious mind. We have two nervous systems, one conscious and one unconscious, but they're still our nervous system. They innervate different parts of us. Shame, guilt's in the unconscious nervous system and guilt's in the conscious nervous system, but it's still shame, guilt. So I use the word shame, guilt, because if you say shame and guilt, well, shame's bad and guilt is good. Listen, your brain just right. stops. I mean, it just vegetates like, I don't know, like, oh, should we have pancakes or should we get out? <laughs> you, you, you know, it's humanly impossible to put it together. And if you don't put it together, you can't kick it out. Mm -hmm. This is really, really important. And it's a great question. So I coined the word shame guilt, but I'm learning for shameful guilt. I really like that. I do too. So you can use whatever you like, but I like shameful guilt. I, I like the word. <laughs> because it's shameful guilt. Yeah. So when you say what benefit the shameful guilt give us, I say nothing positive. Yeah. Because it can only hurt you. How can someone with the lowest frequency that is possible be of assistance for you? It doesn't happen. No. You don't want the lowest. They will say, oh, don't be so guilty. Oh, you can, I mean, they say use guilt instead of regret. Regret such a horrible, horrible emotion. Use guilt. And I say to people, I had a client a couple a while ago who had extreme guilt because she couldn't help her mother heal from alcohol poisoning alcohol poison and her mother passed which which is obvious because if you don't do the work and stop drinking it, you will you know the liver can only handle so much yeah. and she felt very guilt ridden because she lived with her mom and couldn't help her so i said let's try regret i regret that i couldn't help my mother not that i feel guilty i have regret about it which is you know we have regrets about a lot of things Sure. So the regret led to her making beautiful workshops to help people get out of alcoholism because she used so much for her, her mom and they all healed and she was so excited. So you see how regret is a great emotion. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but it's better than guilt. But you regret can't is just, guilt. I'm trying to just wrap my mind. Like, so regret in, in this context is just, uh, Wishing that there was a different outcome, basically. Yeah, I regret but not I taking that responsibility onto yourself, which is yeah. what the shame guilt does. Yeah, but I mean, if you actually, you know, spent all your money in a stock that didn't work, yeah, it's your fault. I regret I did that, but heck, I regret it. I don't have guilt over it. I regret it. Do you see yeah. the difference? Yes. And yeah. haven't we all got a regret? I mean, seriously? <laughs> I can assure you that it, it, the listeners that identify with me on this show, absolutely, yes. I just turned 80 last week, so I have regrets, you know? Happy birthday! <laughs> Do I can give you a list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Guilt, shame. Yeah. Shameful guilt, whoever you want to call it, has no solution. Okay, shame, guilt has no solution. So my job is to help other people see it in that way and get out of shame, guilt. A lot of people that are in so much guilt cannot get out of it because they can't see a way out because that's shame, guilt's job to make it so oppressive that you can't get out. So you need other people, call your girlfriend, call you know the store owner, call your enemy. It doesn't matter. Um, go out and look for a dress. You just got to get out of shame, guilt. And uh, on my website, I have various readings that I've received from spirit because of all the near-death experiences. And it changes, when you read it, it changes your frequency so you can get out of shame, guilt and work on something else. 
So it's one way of getting out of it. Is it going to heal you? No, but it's going to get you out of the hole. Mm -hmm. And that's where then you can at least begin to see, to get to work on the, on the. Exactly. Brilliant. Yes. And it's on my website. You just press, you know, I have as now is the time. It's a short pamphlet. You can either, you know, print it out. You can, I can mail it to you or, you know, it's just my readings that, um, build the energy up so that you can, you've all heard about the frequency of readings and songs and so forth. So, you know, God talks, I write, I'm just the secretary. So I please be on my website and, and do that. If you can't get out of it, because we all are stuck in shame yeah, to a certain degree. Yes. And yes. it's okay yes. to say, I hate my neighbor because they, hit me and they did it's okay to say that it's not okay to say i feel guilty i couldn't fix it yeah so it's okay to feel all of your feelings but it's not okay to stay in that trap of shame guilt thank you right mm -hmm. now why is shame guilt so powerful i mean like seriously it's so powerful because the shame guilt energy needs your energy hmm. needs your light and when we're in it we absolutely feed it like feed, oh you brilliant yes we do and that's why it's i mean if someone's giving you a steak and you're eating whipped cream cherries or something you're like give it to me no 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 you're not going to stop eating right right but they're giving you something that tastes like tar you spit it out right we're very very good food for shame guilt yeah. And those of us that are in recovery um, and or even people before they get sober, I just know that there it's it's that cycle because you you feel, you know, you feel the shame, you know, the shameful guilt and then you drink about it and then you're shameful and guilty about drinking. And so you just that keeps you in that loop. But then when you come out of it, there's just this place of there's no way anyone's going to forgive me. There's no way I can forgive myself like there's. Just that you're still in that. Shame guilt. It's all shame you boo. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. and I and I think that you do that also. Tell people that that's normal. You know, you're not abnormal thinking that way because that's what shame guilt's job is. I just tell people that really it's it's not true. Like. Of course, it's what not your true. mind is telling you is true right now. I understand that it feels absolutely true, but it's not true. It's not the truth. But shame, guilt overpowers us. Mm -hmm. It overpowers us. But shame, guilt has one problem. It dissolves in detection. I love that. Now, you have all seen magicians. They do the hand trip, the bunny trick, and cutting up people and so forth and so on. And you go, oh, my goodness, how do they do that? And then once in a while, you get friends with the magician and he shows you the tricks of how he does this or that. So the next time you see a magician doing stuff, you go, ah, the jig's up. I know how we'll do it. That's how we feel about Shane Hill. I love the that. The jig is up. He can only, it can only hurt you if you don't know its presence. And that's why, again, why I did the films. Because it's a non-entity. It has no other function than to make you stupid. That's all. Sorry, but it's true. That's its only function. And to put humanity down, 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 down. It's put upon humanity. It doesn't belong to us. We have no right to it. What we can do is discover it and kick it out. So how do how do we begin? I, I know you offered that that the reading on your website. Um that's 911. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but yeah, so how do we begin to clear this out? How do we make that shift? This is this is how we do it. We have to you know, I think we all know Sansun. Know thy enemy. Mm -hmm. The more you know your enemy, the more you can know its tricks. So that's why I call myself an educator. I'm helping you to understand the tricks of Shane Guild. And then you'll discover more on your own because your mind gets clearer because you're investigating a magician 
And now you know it's tricks. And what happens? It just goes to another person. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. There is hope. When you know the truth. And they hid the truth. I don't think they know the truth. I don't know. But I don't really care. All I care about is getting out of shame and guilt. Just get out. And um, it's okay to have other negative emotions. And that's where our society has fallen short. Because they say, oh, don't be hatred. Don't hate your mother. And, you know, they did the best they get, which is all true. But it doesn't help you get out of shame guilt. That's yeah. the primary thing we have to do. We have to get out of shame guilt. That's the primary thing. Not to dissolve your hate or get rid of your anger. No. Get out of shame guilt. Because if you get out of shame guilt, the whole world opens up for you. Yeah. So that's the, when you said, how do we do this? That's how we do it. We get out of it. Now we're going to get, to get out of it. That's recognizing it. That's yes. Yes. Now, um, I'm sure you and your listeners have listened to um, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. That, I, yeah. Every Christmas yeah. I watch the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I mean, I love it too. It's a great analogy. Dorothy goes up the yellow brick road in great anticipation of finding a way home and talking to the wizard, <gasps> the all and powerful wizard, not just the wizard, right? The all mm -hmm. and powerful wizard. And she trembles and trembles. And all of a sudden she reaches the top of the mountain and she sees this big place. And Toto, the very smart doggy, mm -hmm pulls the curtain back and what does she see behind the curtain a little old man bald and gray with a big machine puffing out green smoke yep. the wizard is a nothing he's just pumping out green smoke shame guilt is nothing but a puff of green smoke people yeah that's all it is there ain't no more I love your I love your analogies between, you know, once you see how a magic trick works, it's never magic again. And once you see that it's not an all powerful, all knowing wizard, it's a buff of green smoke. Yeah, that's all it is. And it takes like you, you said, it takes all the energy out of it. So we don't need to work out our shame and guilt. We don't need to take. No, 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 it's never piece. say our, never say our, you never oh. claim it. The, the, gotcha. So people don't need like we're under the the uh, the assumption that we need to take each piece of 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 memory and and examine it and you know we I'm just as as a collective that is not the case this no. is just something that we need to alleviate from our lives yeah just say no just say no <laughs> to shameful guilt right either from yourself or from others. So, I mean, there's many tangents we can go here, but you and everyone else, we just have to learn what shame guilt feels like and say no. So when it go. starts coming on or when those thoughts start popping up, the trick is to just immediately recognize it and go, no, nope. no, no. Now, in that time period or in that place, you may hear some words from something. And that's your inner critic probably talking. So you say, who's talking? That's how you get to know your inner critic, who's the shame guilt producer in your life. And you better make friends with him because that's his job, making shame guilt. And we want to make a, a relationship with him so he doesn't have to do that anymore. So that is very simple to say, who's talking? You know, if this is not complicated, you don't need a 4D masters to do this. Well, I think we, I think a lot of people do overthink. And I mean, I talk to myself. I talk to but, myself. I talk to my dogs. I mean, there's constant dialogue going on here so i get what you're saying talking to your inner critic or your inner whatever you want to call it i mean to say hi if you hi. question what 
if you question what you know who's telling you that 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 that's what is then yeah like you said you dissolve it right now the inner critic is very very important and you don't cut his head off you don't try to kick him out you don't shoot him in the head he's part of you or she is part of you you say hi how are you now if we were going to meet i say hi how are you doing? What is your, you like dogs? Can you tell me about your dog? Or what kind of ice cream do you like? I mean, we're talking very physical things here. That's how we make friends. What kind of music do you like? And that's how you talk with your inner critic. And again, I have a film on talking to your inner critic. And you can go on my website and look at it. Is it 100% complete? No, but it'll give you the way. And I can always, I do individual sessions you know, to help people. I, of course, I have to charge for that, but it gives you a way of actually doing it. Yeah. Now, my inner critic, after many months of talking, decided not to babysit me anymore, but to be my partner. And he, his name is King, and he travels around the universe finding beautiful people like you to talk to. Honestly, I get so many podcasts. I'm going, where did you come from? The inner, my, my king, he's my partner there. He gave, he got, he can't evolve unless I evolve. And I can't evolve unless he evolves. So we're stuck with each other. It's a marriage. Um, you can't get a divorce. Uh, but you your inner critic, stuff. no. Yeah, but he, it's king now, my friend. I don't even call him an inner critic. I call him king. Yeah, because you've actually, like you said, started with the who's talking and then questioned and then made friends and got to know your inner critic. And now this. Work this, together. Yeah. So this partnership now yeah, kind of leads you on just your soul evolution. Yeah. So, see, the problem is the inner critic is living in a wrong timeline. He's living in when you were two and three years old. Nobody told him it's 2023. So you have to say, hi, it's the year 23. I'm 50 years old. Believe me, I've been through a lot. I think we can work this out. I'm not two years old anymore. Oh, really? Nobody ever told me. Okay. So is this any like correlation with like your inner child? Yeah. Okay. And the inner critic's in charge of everything until you get up and say, hi, can we make a deal? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I can totally see what you're talking about. Just you have to acknowledge these things. There's these programs that are running and we just let them run. And then they run like that virus, your whole system until you step in and go, wait, actually, actually, I'm, I'm going to be and I'm going to take some charge here and we're not going to do it this way anymore. And it's better for you. And it's better for me. Because I said to King, would you like more power? And he goes, oh, yeah, I love more power. I said, you can have more power when I have more power. And the only thing that's keeping both of us from having our own power is stupid shame guilt. So you can't make it anymore for me. And anybody that talks to me, we throw it away. And you don't criticize me. And I don't criticize you. Because we don't want shame guilt in our house. It's our house. It's not shame guilt's house. We kicked that, that visitor out a long time ago. So how did you come to the realization that this was, like, what was it through your near-death experiences? How did you realize that the one thing that changed, like the one game changer for everything was this one piece? Was That was a day of like, oh, shock. Because I was working through, you know, I've had extremely hard childhood, broken neck and um, uh, so, you know, broken jaw and brain traumas and, and scoliosis. And, you know, I mean, we could go on forever. I'm okay now. But, you know, it was pretty significant. And I was dying at 50 because how can you live that long without doing some work? Anyway, so I did a lot of chiropractic help. And that tends to lead itself emotionally. You know, you you know, they adjust your body, but also it, the emotions tend to creak in. It isn't like normal give you a shot and something and that's that. 
So the emotion starts kicking in and I decided to talk to them instead of talking to my therapist. It got very boring and very expensive. So I just said, I'm talking to myself. And they talked back to me. It was amazing. So all of a sudden I saw this blackness and weird stuff. And I and I and they said it that's shame guilt. I went, oh my goodness. And I realized that shame guilt was the, like you said, everything. So I start concentrating on the shame guilt I had from my horrible childhood experiences, not the direct anger or the hatred or, you know, not, you know, it, it was all the shame guilt that I could just see and throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. It was physically tangible, the throw it away. And all of a sudden, I was losing my gray hair and I was getting younger. And within a side of a couple months, I was so healthy. And people came to me and say, Lois, what are you doing? We want to do what you're doing. And I said, I'm just talking to myself. And they said, can we do that? <laughs> and I says, I guess so. So I taught them like I'm teaching you. And they did that. And they got well and happy and pretty. And they have brothers and cousins and nephews all came to me. And they all did the same thing. I got this stuff is amazing. But nobody has taken shame guilt by itself and made it an independent study. It's always part of the group, part of the lessons, part of you know what we do for healing. No, it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. You can't piece me shame and guilt because it is incredibly the reason for all negativity. So why would you deal with Oh, the depression, and the anxiety. I mean, I thought I'd be dead before I, because I was I had suicide, I had depression, I had anxiety. I had all those things, and it takes you a couple of years, right, to go through all of them, and I'd be dead. So uh, the the shortcut was kicking shame guilt out, but finding it and knowing about it, and I just did that on my own, and that's what happened. It was spontaneous. That's it's incredible. Not- so. But when when you were having these chiropractic treatments, your body was storing these emotions. So these emotions were over 50 years were being released. And then they came right face to face to where then it was time to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's incredible. I can but I can picture it's not unusual. It's not unusual. Yeah. I totally believe that our bodies store. Our emotions, as you know, the body keeps the score, the body, you know, manifests what, you know, I mean, I just, I believe all of these things. So that's, that's really, really interesting. And so it was a matter of natural healing. And I remember meeting someone when I was in um, Sedona that they, um, they go, oh, you do the Hawaiian and they had a Hawaiian name for it. And I was talking about talking to ourselves and all that. And they go, oh, that's what we do all the time. We do this and that. So I'm just doing a natural healing. I don't teach therapists. I teach people like you and mm-hmm. other people because it's not in the books. Right. It's for your own healing in your own way. But these are the principles. Talk to your inner critic, find the shame guilt, kick it out and learn not to take it on from other people. Now, we still haven't discovered why it's so dangerous and why is it so hard to get rid of. And it's hard to get rid of because we have not been told the truth that we can get rid of shame guilt that easily. If we see it, if we know it, it loses its power and we kick it out. And it really is as simple as that shift. Exactly. Shift in energy. Mm-hmm. Now, will you get rid of all the shame? Yo, of course not. It's like a pie. You get rid of this much on your mother and this much your father. And it just becomes natural. It's not hard. And it becomes um, second nature to you. And then when someone throws the comment like, why did you do a stupid thing like that? That's just like you. You would do something weird like that or something. And you just go, nope. Can you say that another way? I don't take it. Yeah. Say it like I way. just it's been it's been presented to me where um judgments and uh 
things like that, you know, where someone is trying to offer you something, you know, they're, they're gifts, just like a compliment is. And we have all the power in the world to just not accept it. I just don't accept your shameful guilt or the shameful guilt that's being presented to me. That's right. And that's why I have my website. The big guy says, no, that's all. Yes. You know, and then, but then you have to work on your inner critic. You're, you're the only one that I teach you. And then you teach your inner critic. Because mm -hmm. he went to school when he was two years old. And you're not two years old anymore. So you have to bring him up to speed. And it will take work. Because the majority of uh, the, the suffering that people go through is that self. In, it's it's inside of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We are. Uh, we are worse uh, um tortures mm -hmm. we torture ourselves but we were trained to do that the good old catholic church the good old methodist church your good old priests and the pope and all of them yeah i did learn to say um like i changed my prayers up about a year ago to where mm -hmm. um i stopped asking for my defects to be removed every single day because I didn't want to stop saying that I was defective every day. And, and that made a big difference in how I feel about myself and about my choices. And um, so it's interesting. It's, it's along the lines exactly. of, but you're like putting like the key in the lock. Like there is like a puzzle piece. The, that look, you could not have gotten to the key in the lock and, unless you did the one before that. Yeah. See, it's all progression. And that's why I was so adamant about becoming a shame guilt educator people say Lois you're crazy and no one's going to come to you because you're crazy you can't no we don't say those words and I'm going well if you don't say them how the hell are you going to get rid of them you know yeah. so finally the world has caught up and they're like okay we can talk about it and I'm like, you know so it was all hidden hidden now I'm going to read a sentence this is how to be a Jewish mother. Doesn't matter. Italian, Jewish, Polish, they're all the same. But this is very, this is a book written in 1964. And it tells how you can be a great guilt mother. Word, I'm reading it. The word. Mm -hmm. Making guilt work. It's written. Word. Underlining all techniques of the Jewish mother is the ability to plant, cultivate, harvest guilt, control guilt, and you control the child. Now, this is word for word. You're like, oh, I don't believe it. Yeah, well, it's written. That's why they kept on teaching it. Wow. I know. Like the guilt trip actually got put into a book. Yes, because that's the way you can be a good Jewish mother. Wow. Now, doesn't that say a lot? Yes. Yes, it does. Let your child hear you sigh every day if you don't know what he's done to make you suffer. He will. You know, like... like uh, that's wow. lesson number two. And it's a means of control from a mother. And they think that that's how they're, I mean, people are think that they think that they're doing something good, but this is just the opposite of love. Of course. Beat a child every day. If you don't know what he's done to deserve the beating, he will. A slight modification gives us the Jewish mother corner rule. Let your child hear you sigh. It is important to instill the guilt in them. Wow. Wow, yeah. The technique of basic suffering. I kid you not. This is makes you think, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, I so, mean this is this is just suffering 101. Like right. Torture. Right. And that's how we were raised. Now, obviously, all different and we're, you know, the timeline and everything, but we have been instilled with guilt, shame, shame, guilt. We have 
you know, been put in our food, and put in our water, consciously and unconsciously. So people say, oh, I don't have any shame guilt. I'm going, okay, that's interesting. People have shame guilt around not drinking enough water or about eating something that we have to do to survive. We were taught that way. Huh. We were taught to bring all our behavior into a shame guilt scenario. Isn't that hard? And I'm saying to myself, and nobody's talking about this? So that's how my purpose in life began. Someone's got to talk about this. I'm so glad you are. I'm so glad that you are here just to bring attention to this. And that's a very good way of putting it, bringing attention to yeah. this. And it has to be its own study because it's it's everything. It's everything. Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying something political, um, but I think it bears to, um, if you can agree or not. But the reason that Donald Trump has gotten to be so effective in doing so much, many things, is because he doesn't do shame guilt at all. If you ever listen to him, he is totally immune to it. But people call him a narcissist because he's not willing to be shameful. Yeah. Of course he's not willing to be shameful. I'm not willing either. <laughs> they can call him all kinds of names because they can't get in. Because he's just de declines it. He's just not willing to absorb. He says no. And the shame he guilt. Says, right. So <laughs> they can call me a narcissist too, but I'm a happy person. I mean, I still have issues and self, you know, but the most successful people on the good side don't allow shame guilt to enter into their lives. They've done enough work. It's interesting to watch. It's but anyway. To hear, it is, is a really neat, um, like I'm having an aha in talking to you because I have processed a lot of the shame guilt that came with my drinking mm -hmm. and the actions that, you know, I mean, I just, I made a lot of choices that led to really painful circumstances for myself and for a lot of other people. And so it was almost like I used the shame guilt to propel me into a different way of living. But now as I grow into loving and accepting myself, those things no longer Propel me, have but weight. Can, go, what's that? To have any weight inside of you. Yeah. They can't touch you. And once you say no, once you realize, that's the whole thing. That's what we're all about today. Once we realize shame guilt is nothing but a puff of green smoke and here to hurt you. It has nothing good. And people that say, oh, we need guilt. We need shame. I'm going, you are so wrong and you just really should shut up. But I can't tell you. But eventually you will get it that. Shame guilt has nothing good to offer you. It can only make you stupid. Yeah. And That's like it. you said, it's not just dangerous, but it's deathly because it's deadly because it makes you commit suicide. Yeah. Because the times where I've been at my absolute lowest, it that was the that I was, was suicidal. The prevailing the prevailing emotion. And that would what woke me up like, oh my God. The world would be a better place without me. That's what I kept on saying. Um, I didn't do any action on it. I called my friend who happened to be a psychiatrist and he said, we need to talk, Lois. <laughs> so it kind of jolted me out a little bit, but that was a scary place to be in. But if you see David Hawkins, it all makes sense. It's proven mathematically. So someone says, oh, you know, that say, it's proven mathematically that shame guilt is the lowest energy frequency you can have. And the only thing that can come from it is suicide. And that's proven mathematically. You can't argue with math. No, that's a great thing about math. Yeah, so that's the...
So is there anything else that we need to know as uh, just as this group of listenership? I feel like we've, I feel like you've brought light to a very a really, dark place. a really simple thing, but just you, you don't know it until you know it. So I'm so exactly. glad that you're here. And once you, once you see the magician's trick, you don't want to see a magician again. It's like, really? It's boring. So Shane Gill's boring. Yeah, boring. <laughs> and unnecessary. It has no power unless you give it power. Remember the, the Wizard of Oz and his big machine. So that's my concept. Now you can have your own concept. When I see Shane Gill coming from somebody, I see this big pop of green smoke coming at me like, uh-uh, not here. Goodbye. <laughs> But, you know, each person has their own images. Yeah. And I'm sharing my image with you. I mean, I could see how that's easier said than done as far as, you know. The, Definitely. Like, there's Definitely. a lot of people pleasing that a lot of us suffer suffer from. And, um, and that's where you take it apart. But at least you are told the truth. That yeah. it's not right for you. It's not good for you. Are you going to clear it up in 24 hours? I don't think so. I've been working many years. But at least I'm on the truth. And at least I got well. And at least my gray hair went away. So It's incredible. <laughs> well, because it shame, guilt alters your emotions. Turns them to positive, negative ones. Shame, guilt affects your immunity. It, may, it, de it makes your system not work properly because of the lower the frequency. Yeah, and that's that whole mind-body connection. of Exactly. And, but shame guilt is the cause of the lower frequency. And you can't raise your frequency until you kick shame guilt out. All the wishing and the hoping is not going to do it. You actually got to kick it out of you. And it's possible. Well, I want to encourage everybody listening today to take note. And like I said, I will include um, your website in our show notes, Lois, because I would like people to go, be able to go and to look and visually see what we've talked about here, the way you've you know put yeah, it together you can, in your films. You can go to LoisHollis.com, L-O-I-S-H-O-L-L-I-S.com. And on that site, I have three websites. I'm Good Film, Truth is Simple, and uh, I don't know another one. I have a great tech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they'll uh, well, yeah they'll say. all be. I'll make sure that I link those um, link those well, in our show notes. And but, uh, uh, yeah, so, and please sign up for my newsletter because in the newsletter I have a book and it's called Five Hundred Questions, One Answer. Guess what the answer is. <laughs> so I show deal. you, right. <laughs> so I show you 500 ways we shame ourselves and others shame us. Now, that's why it takes like two, three months to get 10 of them every 10 or 20, I forget, per per um, week. Mm -hmm. But it's a great learning. We got to learn. We got to teach ourselves. Because <laughs> this is how we were taught. And we have to unteach ourselves. Yeah. And that's a lot of what we do in recovery is the unbecoming. When we were kids, we didn't know these things. We learned these things in order to survive in the world. But, yeah, I was laden with shame and guilt. But you're doing it right. You're doing it right. And the other information will help with the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. And it isn't they have to be a genius to do this work. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's common sense once it once it, you hear it, but until you hear it, like you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And I'm not downing therapy. Therapy has helped a lot of people, but they don't go this route. You know, they can help you at certain things, but you gotta really do this work and know about shame and guilt because you can't spend one, two. You know, I had another client that came to me and said, I really like what you do and I wish that you could help me, but you can't help me. I said, why can't I help you? He said, because I've been depressed for two years and I've gone to therapy for two years. And perhaps I'm unfixable. 
I said, did they ever talk about shame and guilt? He said, no, we just talk about depression. I said, there is the problem. Unless you get rid of the shame and guilt, you will always have depression. And I'm telling you, you'll have it for five more years. Unless you tackle, get rid of the shame and guilt that's causing the depression. He goes, really? It's hopeful? So we had a session and he got rid of the depression because he kicked shame and guilt out. That's wonderful. It, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Because I always give the analogy, when it rains, I have a couple holes in the roof. So I have to clean up afterwards. And then fine. And then another next week it rains again and I got to clean up all the water again. Wouldn't it be easier to fix the roof and hold, close up the holes? Yeah. And that's how I feel about shame and guilt. Just cover up the holes of shame and guilt and everything's good. Yeah. But if you leave it open, it's always going to get you. It can just keep seeping in. And then you stay in that cycle. Whereas, like you said, if you do the work and you heal the roof. That's yeah. fine. So that's how I uh, give an analogy. <sighs> that I, love was it. I love your analogies. I'm, I'm a visual thinker. So the way you describe things works well for my brain. Good. That helps. Yes. All right. Well, Lois, I want to thank you again for being here and for talking to us. And I'm just, I'm looking at my notes here and I feel like I didn't have to write a ton of notes because the most important thing is the shameful guilt dissolves in detection. So once you That's know it. your enemy. That's it. Yeah. That's the end. It's not very complicated. Yeah. And then you can go on to question your inner critic, make friends, develop a partnership. Yeah. And you're uh, free to go around the country. But you have to know that shame and guilt doesn't belong to you. Yeah. It does not belong to you. It's an outside energy and it's not your shame. It's the shame put upon you. The shame. You cannot own it. Don't own it. That's a good one too. Don't own it. All right. Well, Lois. Bless, bless well, you. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to thank you again. Is there anything else you want to add? Just thank you for being who you are. And thank you for helping to spread this information because I have one voice <laughs> yes. and uh, you really got the, and I'm about truth. I'm about truth. And me too. Once, once you're about truth, you are just led to the solutions. So thank you for the time available and um, have a great Christmas. Oh, I mean, I sure enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it because it's yours to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's such a time where you can get wrapped up in other, in the, what you're not doing. And that's totally unnecessary. I'm going to enjoy mine and I hope you enjoy yours too. And I am, I'm working on it pretty good. So I'm okay. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to our um, replay so I can post it up because I think it was a really good one. And uh, I like to uh, put it up there. I will definitely I, let you know. When I don't put it up. My it. tech does all that stuff. So God bless them. Yeah. So Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you again, Lois. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.